You're welcome to the art of Mala Iwa, and today we'll be talking about scribbling. Yep. Now, I know that in the past I spoke about hatching and cross hatching lines here and there. I might throw, I know you see me as a maestro chattering the course of direction like a milestone. Okay. <laughs> Let's check the lineage of lines and strokes. Let's delineate lines and rows. Let's eliminate right from wrong. Oh. So what really is scribbling? I really do not like to get complicated about these things. I mean, I, I, I'm here to just make these things as simple as possible. So uh, scribbling, when you pick your pen and you just make circles and just go like, just make these things, you may want to, you know, whatever. This is scribbling. That is it. There's no so much of long stories in all of this. Now, if you followed the series that I've done, because this is part three in the ballpoint pen shading ballpoint pen shading techniques right this is part three scribbling now if you follow the series and if you've not seen the series i i would suggest that you go i will link the uh I, I will put the links to those uh tutorials in the description or below this video rather so but let's check this this is the lightest so you're just doing that and if you've seen the other tutorials I've done, you would understand why I'm doing this to all of the boxes. It's because I want to do a tonal gradation or a value scale, basically moving from light to dark. This is the lightest here. We have one. This is the second. The eighth, right? So um, this is the first layer. Now, if you want to make this darker, the simple thing is the wider you make your scribbling lines and wide apart the lines are, the lighter it appears. But the closer you make the scribbling lines and not so apart from themselves, the darker they appear. So it's just a matter of layers, right? So let me just go more now, you see? So this place is darker, this place is lighter. So let's go back to our value scale. This is the first layer. Let's add the second layer to all of these as we progressively move to the darkest. So this is us putting the second layer. And you can immediately start seeing how darker the second and third is looking from the first yeah and it's basically the same principle i think all of this shading techniques have the same principle but different characters yeah so the character of this one is just a continuous moving line in all direction if you may yeah um, for hatching, it's just lines coming together. So th the, the basic thing is that the, the closer the lines are to themselves, the darker it appears. And then the wider apart the lines are from themselves. Oh, sorry for the noise. There's a construction going on around my place. Oh, my goodness. Sorry about that. So, but you can see, right? So this is the second layer of just added to all of this so you can see the consistency of this is similar it's the same actually and then this is different so we're going to add the third layer and adding the third layer this is it you're adding the third layer and you can immediately see that the third is becoming darker than one and two and don't forget just make your scribbling lines smaller like don't give so much space between them and that is what would account for the darkness
So let's say the light direction is coming from here and you have a sphere here, right? So of course you have something like this. Now, when you do these things, always use the larger, um, larger uh, strokes first. Just like I had said before in my real time um, pen demonstration, yeah, I was alluding to a painter. A painter starts mostly with larger strokes. They start with large strokes, then they now go into smaller strokes for detail. And also they don't really start with like, say, small brushes. They start with large brushes to cover up the space first. Then they can now tune in and... Um, start uh, using smaller brushes for details. So when you start up with little brushes as a painter, you get lost easily. As, unless if that is your style, of course. Because for me, if you follow this channel, you will know there is no hard and fast rule for so many things for me. So yeah. And it's really because of how you choose to express yourself. So now... This is really this. Uh, these are relatively large scribbles. It should be somewhere here. Uh, uh, you see, like here now, it's this one. Here, it's basically all of this. So I want to go in with this now to begin to. If you know the analogy of the sphere, you know that you have reflected. You have um your core shade here. So I'm going with the smaller scribbles now. Smaller scribbles just to add more depth to this whole thing. So that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. And I'm not adding, for, for those that are wondering, I'm not adding pressure. I'm just making the lines smaller, making the uh, scribbles smaller than the ones that were there before. Basically, that's what I'm doing. I'm just making the scribbles smaller. And that's how you keep doing that. Just making them a little smaller. That way you get them to look darker. It's basically an illusion game, really. It's really an illusion game. So, or an elusive game, <laughs> whatever. So, um, yeah, that's what you do. So you keep doing that, right? You keep adding, you keep adding. After this, I'm going to give you some little tricks and tips, or tips and tricks, whatever, you know what I mean. So, like that. So I, I think I'll just um, go in and just... So the more I added, the simpler, the smaller scribble, the darker it appears, just like what happened here. Like that, you keep going, you keep going. And if you really want to make it as dark as this, then you take your time. You, you know, th th there's this... <laughs> okay, maybe I should just move to the tips and tricks that I was talking about earlier. Now... There are different ways you can go about this. You can take a pattern and just go with it. So you could decide to be like this and just, you know, like that. And just, so it's like you're doing an eight, basically. So it's just an eight. You just condition your mind. You can continue going that way. You can continue going that way. You can create a pattern. If you want to go secular, you can go secular. If you want to go secular, so you have secular here. You have an eight here. You want to go nine, nine nine however you want to go it's a pattern you're creating you need to understand that you're creating a pattern yeah you're creating a pattern and it's this pattern that is the unit of the drawing that's what holds the drawing together really so you can do anything you can decide to go patternless <laughs> that's also a pattern i mean just anything that just comes to mind just keep going just keep going but one of the tips i want to give you this is the first tip right is the first tip like you choose a pattern and you go with it or now the second pattern the second tip i'll give you is when you're going maybe in this direction clockwise and everything keep go anti-clockwise also so if you're doing an eight like this try going an eight in the other like just so you're doing both this direction and this direction combine them together it will help you because it is scribbling and people just feel it's just 
uh, going, just doing whatever you want to do. There is the tendency for you to want to just make it just fast and just do. Mm -mm. Take your time and really think about what you're doing. I mean, just love what you're doing. You would eventually figure out newer ways to go about it or beautiful mistakes and stuff like that. So concerning scribbling, we've come to the end of it.